Hello and welcome to the live stream of the 8 a.m. service here at Summit of Peace. I'm Pastor P.J. Stolman. Pastor Jacoby is on vacation this week. Uh, so glad to have you join us today and uh, help celebrate uh, continuing celebration of Easter. And we're continuing our sermon series, You Asked For It. So today we look at the topic of how do you help someone who is hurting. So we hope that's a blessing for you today. And uh, a few pre-service announcements for you. Just so you know, our children's message is taken out of the service, but you can watch it uh, 9.15 on our Facebook page. Um, so please tune in for that. And also, we'll be doing drive through communion today from 9.15 to 10. And again, as always, you can submit your prayer requests at any time during the service. Um, earlier the better and make sure we can get those in and and prayed for today so i don't think there's anything else so uh, let's go ahead and prepare our hearts with our opening hymn
begin our worship as always remembering the name in which we were baptized into in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord, how good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant and fitting to sing praises to him. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. The Lord sustains the humble, but casts the wicked to the ground. We take time to humbly come before the Lord and repent of our sins, trusting in the Lord's mercy and power to restore and mend our sinful lives. Lord Jesus, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you by our thoughts, words, and actions. Forgive us for our lack of desire and effort to be healed and truly transformed by your great love. Forgive us when we respond in judgment and not compassion to those who are hurting, creating us clean hearts and a willing spirit that desires only to do your will. Let it be done for you as you believe, as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority. I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I belong to Jesus now and forever. Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. 
Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading today comes from Exodus chapter 15. Moses made Israel set out from the Red Sea, and they went into the wilderness of Shur. They went three days into the wilderness and found no water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink the water of Marah because it was bitter. Therefore, it was named Marah. And the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a log, and he threw it in the water, and the water became sweet. There the Lord made for them a statute and a rule, and there he tested them, saying, If you will dil diligently listen to the voice of the Lord your God, and do that which is right in his eyes, and give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you that I put on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord, your healer. The word of the Lord. Our epistle today comes from Ephesians chapter 3. Paul writes, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Our gospel reading today comes from John chapter 5. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate a pool in Aramaic called Bethesda, which is five roofed colonnades. In these lay a multitude of invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be healed? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I am going, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Get up, take up your bed, and walk. And at once the man was healed, and he took up his bed and walked. Now that day was the Sabbath. This is the gospel of the Lord. I invite you to confess your faith in the one true God with me in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
peace from God our Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our message today is the gospel reading from John that we heard earlier. And I invite you to pray with me. Lord Jesus, may the meditations of our hearts, the words of my mouth, be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, O Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We'll continue in our sermon series on You Asked For. This is a question that the congregation has submitted. And we kind of took the most popular ones. And today we're focusing on the question of how do we help someone who is hurting? And hurt is just one of those things that's a universal condition in our world, isn't it? It doesn't matter where you are or who you are, you're going to run into someone who's hurting. And we all know what it's like to hurt and to be hurt by others and to struggle with hurt that doesn't seem to go away or maybe doesn't seem to be healed. So the question isn't really, do we hurt or when will we get hurt? The question is, what do we do with our hurt and what do we do when someone else is hurting. Well, I have a few memes for you in honor of uh, Pastor Jacoby not being here. I decided to include some memes today. Uh, to maybe tell us what not to do uh, when someone is hurting. First one is Kermit the Frog. People recorded funny videos of people getting hurt and everyone laughs at the injured, but that's none of my business. It's this idea of laughing at the expense of those who are getting hurt or maybe just thinking well that's none of my business uh, i'll just go do something else maybe you've heard this expression um it's not funny until someone gets hurt then it's hilarious it's probably not the best way to think of the situation and finally we have the dwight from the office the cure for crossfit soreness is a rest day false the cure for crossfit Soreness is more CrossFit. I don't know if there's any CrossFit people out there, but probably not the best idea to inflict pain on someone else who is already going through pain. So this leaves us with the question, really, how do we help someone who is hurting? Well, I want to start with the question of how do we help ourselves? Because how you help yourselves when you're hurt is probably how you'll try or seek to help someone else who is hurting. So just trying to put together a list of um, maybe positive and negative things that we uh, think about when we're hurting. You know, probably one of the negative or false ideas is to just try harder to just pick yourself up by your bootstraps and uh, just dig into your willpower. It doesn't really work, especially when it comes to things that we need other people and other resources to help us with. So this idea of shame and uh, telling ourselves that we should have already mastered this problem or this behavior, and so I should be better than this. You kind of shoot all over yourself in a, in a sense. Again, not very helpful and probably will only actually feed the behavior or the problem and make it worse. This idea of judging, there's uh, right, it's this uh, kind of applying shame to someone else. Uh, you should be better, or how could you do this, or you should know by now, um, or you're, you're doing this, or you're hurting with this, so that means all these other things about you must be true. We can try to kind of put ourselves in a box, or put other people in a box. A lot of times when we're hurting, we want to isolate, we want to just try to avoid people and we think that we're just we can't be around others because of, uh, we don't want to see them uh, we don't want them to see us hurting and of course there's the negative coping behaviors right a lot of times this uh, can be sinful behaviors those ones that uh, we think will actually help us in our hurt but when it comes down to it it actually is hurt, harming us it's, maybe it's addictions maybe it's Anger, maybe it's um, things that we shouldn't watch, maybe it's uh, 
hanging out with people who are a bad influence on us, whatever it might be. As humans, we tend to go to those things that will actually not help us, uh, but instead just give us a temporary relief from our hurt. Well, there's positive things that we might do as well. There's the idea of giving grace to each other and grace to ourselves. That Wait, I am human. I do have hurt. I am wounded. I do make mistakes. I do make failures. I do sin. Um, this idea of uh, being humble and uh, being... Uh, Humble enough to ask someone for help, right? And to seek connection, to seek uh, the expertise or the support that you need. Uh, the idea of being patient with yourself and that a lot of times it takes time to heal and it takes time to overcome bad behaviors and thoughts and actions. Well, instead of isolation, there's the idea of solitude and rest, this idea of... Um, Taking alone time, not to avoid people, but to recharge, maybe have time with prayer, um, time to reflect and think. And instead of judging, there's idea of, right, of acceptance and affirming oneself of your value in Christ and accepting yourself as you are at that moment and all of its hurts and all of its pains and weaknesses and strengths. Encouraging one another, encouraging yourself that there is hope, that there is um, there is strength to get through whatever it is. Then there's the positive behaviors that we do, right? That maybe it's uh, talking to a good friend, maybe it's uh, a habit that you enjoy, such as music, or maybe it's a show that's uh, good to watch, or... Um, Maybe it's calling a friend. There's a lot of things that we can do that are helpful when we're hurting. Well, I want to ask you how you think that you should help others or what comes to mind when you think of how to help someone else that's hurting. Uh, maybe there's a few ideas for you. A lot of times as Americans, we focus on money, right? And um, that if we just had more money, everything would be okay, or the ice pack there, uh, the physical health, maybe what is most wrong with us is our physical pain. If we just got rid of that, and if we just have our physical health and enough money, then we'll really be okay. Well, there's a lot of problems with that, as you know. Um, not to say that those aren't needs that we have, but I think as Americans, we tend to focus on those two above everything else, and that uh, creates a lot of problems and hurts in our lives. Uh, I had to put the psychiatrist one uh, with Lucy up there as one who's studying counseling, and uh, also the teacher one there. Um, again, these are good things, right? To go to counseling, obviously, or to get taught something. Uh, the negative would be maybe taking this view towards someone else, if this isn't your profession or your authority, or if you're outside of your expertise, right, and you try to pretend uh, to know something that you really don't know, or maybe come across as uh, judgmental or condescending towards someone as, uh, instead of as an equal uh, human who's also under grace and also struggling with various hurts. And finally, we have the quote from uh, the bottom there, Maybe you've probably heard it before. Give a man a fish, feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish, feed him for a lifetime, right? So this is the idea of when we help someone, we don't just want to put a Band-Aid on them or something like that, but we actually want to equip and empower them to be able to live independently. Well, as I said before, there's the idea of us focusing on the physical and the um, financial needs of people, but... When you think about it, we're actually multifaceted humans. Uh, this is the idea of the wholeness wheel. This is uh, something that a lot of Lutheran, Lutherans use uh, to describe health or this idea of holistic health. So you can see there's a lot of different uh, dimensions to our health. There might be social health. There might be emotional health. Uh, there's the physical and financial health, but then there's also the vocational and the intellectual health. Uh, maybe it's bad thought patterns. Maybe it's uh, we're just in a job that's really difficult. Maybe uh, we're having difficulty with depression or anxiety or some other kind of 
uh, emotional needs, lack of connection. But as you can see, the spiritual need is the one that's most important. It's the one that goes around all of them and kind of affects everything uh, and every part of our health is that spiritual need. This is the most important. And unfortunately, it's often the most neglected in our lives and the lives of others, isn't it? You can see at the center of our health is the idea that we are new creations. We are those who are baptized into Christ and therefore are new creations. We're forgiven. We're set free from the power of sin. And uh, our identity isn't in our sins. It's not in our hurts. It's ultimately in who God has made us to be in Christ. Well, what does Scripture say about it? There's a lot of good verses on this. and Obviously, uh, you don't have time to get through everything. But James tells us to be quick to, quick to listen and slow to speak, to actually listen to the person, um, to find out where they are, as opposed to judging them and trying to um, figure out what's wrong with them simply from appearance. This is the idea of loving the Lord first and from that, that we will then know uh, how to love our neighbor as ourselves. How, how would you want to be helped if you were in that situation that they're in? Romans tells us to please our neighbor, please each other for our own good, to build them up, to encourage one another, Thessalonians. And Galatians tells us to bear one another's burdens, that we literally are here to share our burdens with one another. And this actually fulfills the love of Christ that he is calling us to do. Well, it can be tempting to, um, when you have someone who's hurting or uh, and you try to help, it can be tempting to think of it as just a project or a task or something that needs to be fixed. And I want you to consider this quote, that people are not problems to be solved, they are humans to be loved. See, when Jesus saw someone who was hurting, he didn't just see something that needed to be fixed. He saw a person. He saw the, the whole being there. He saw into the depths of their soul that this is someone that he genuinely loves and cares for. It's not just something to fix or something to solve. And as humans, we might be able to help ourselves with various facets of our health, such as financial, physical, maybe even emotional, maybe relational, maybe with our job or our career. There's a lot of things we can do as humans. But when it comes down to it, to the most important aspect of our health, the spiritual health, it's only the Lord who can heal us. And that's... What we want to remember today is that we have a Lord and He is our healer. He is our great physician and He does what no one else can do by healing the very depths of our soul. Jesus tells us to love one another as He has loved us. And it's something that we've heard uh, recently in one of our sermons. But really, when we seek to do anything as Christians, we want to look to see what Jesus calls us to do, what, what he models for us. And so we take a look at John chapter 5. And what does Jesus do? He is out there publicly being with the lowest of the low in society, right? He was out there at a time of a feast, and so there would have been large crowds of people there at this uh, called the Pool of Bethesda, probably Pools of Bethesda in Jerusalem. And he's there and he's spending time with the people who are paralyzed, blind, lame. I mean, how would you want to spend your day off? Probably you wouldn't think of being with these people, right? But this is the Lord of the universe and this is how he chooses to be, uh, to spend his time, is to be with those who are hurting the most, And he goes and he walks up to the person, someone who has been there for 38 years as an invalid, paralyzed for 38 years, if you can imagine that. 
And he asks them, do you want to be healed? That's kind of a crazy question. Of course he would want to be healed, right? But I think this is a really important question that we ask ourselves and others as we seek to understand uh, how do we help someone? I think, I think it's amazing what we will do and the effort we will put into financially becoming more healthy or making sure that that is secure or maybe physically uh, going to a rigorous exercise program or doing whatever it takes to have a good career and a solid future and doing really what we want. But it's amazing how little we will do when it comes to our spiritual health, isn't it? Yet this is the most important thing. This is actually the thing that should have the most of our time and our effort and, right, and our desire to become better. And as sinful humans, we don't want to be healed, as ridiculous as that sounds. That our sinful nature has actually made us have a tendency to go against God and his will. And as Jesus heals this man instantly, uh, just by speaking his word, we're not actually told in the story whether this man actually believes in Jesus after that miracle. He tells the Pharisees that this is the man who healed me. Uh, he goes to the temple and Jesus tells him who he is. But we never actually know what happens. Uh, just as the story of the lepers, only one of them returns who was cleansed. And so this idea of, in our struggle against sin, do you want to be healed? Do you really want God to change you and to do what is necessary in order for God to change you? Do you want to go through the pain of giving up those things that you, and those sins that have brought you so much comfort? The pain of dying to oneself. The pain of going into the unknown, of walking with Jesus in a new way, in new power, and being vulnerable with other people, and sharing your burdens with someone else. It's scary. And it's something we can run away with, but what is our cure? The cure is the word of Jesus that changes our hearts. When we see Jesus for who he is, and we hear his word, it begins to change our hearts that his healing is really the healing that we need. Because he gives us our identity, he accepts us, and he values us right where we're at. And so Jesus' word is immediately able to heal this man. Imagine he was at this pool waiting to be brought into the pool. It was supposed to have magical powers, uh, apparently. Every time it was stirred, the, person, the first person who went in was healed. While well, this person had tried it for 38 years and hadn't gotten anywhere. Maybe we feel that way in our own lives, that we've, we've been stuck in a sinful habit or behavior and we tried everything else but Jesus and what he wants us to do. And see, the thing about Jesus' healings is they weren't just there to, uh, because he wanted to make us feel better or because he didn't like to see people sick. Although he did care, does indeed care about our physical health. Jesus did all these healings and miracles so that it would point to him as the Son of God so that we would see and know him as the Lord and Savior of the world who came to redeem us, forgive us, take on all of our brokenness and pain so that we would have new life and redemption and the hope of one day being free from all pain, sorrow, and death. And as we seek to help others, I think this is good to keep in mind that we don't just simply seek to help someone physically or financially or emotionally, but we seek that in so doing all these things that we want them to see Jesus. We want them to be pointed to the ultimate healer and source of life. Because it's only him that can give us the most important healing. Jesus says, whoever hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life. And will not be judged, but is crossed over from death to life. 
Literally, only Jesus can give the healing of our souls. That literally crosses us over from eternal death and separation from him to eternal life and peace and joy in him. So that may be your comfort today in all of your hurts that Jesus has healed you in the most important and long-lasting way. Let that be the source and the motivation for your healing in all those other areas of your life and as you seek to intervene in other people's lives. To his name, amen. The peace of God which surpasses all human understanding will guard and keep our hearts and minds firmly in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. For our generosity moment today, we'd like to thank our 5th and 6th grade confirmation teachers, uh, Tori Carpenter, Danny Runkle. Thank you also to our crew, uh, high school counselors, Susan Argo, David Runkle, for all their hard work teaching, guiding, loving, connecting with our youth, no matter what the circumstances, we thank you for their sacrifice. Uh, some of the things that they've done are lesson plans, Zoom calls, devotionals, games, letters and notes, uh, and lots, lots more. So we thank you for the blessing that they've been in the lives of our youth. And we take this time to uh, worship the Lord with our offerings. If you haven't already, you can go online and, and donate if you feel so moved. And God bless. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our sins. Punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds, by his wounds we are healed. He was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our sins. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, by his wounds, we are healed. We are healed by your sacrifice in the life that you gave. We are healed for you paid the price. Crushed for our sin, the punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds, by his wounds we are
continue with worshiping the Lord with the prayers of the church. Thank you for, again for submitting your requests so that we can include those in our service today. Uh, I invite you to pray with me. Lord Jesus Christ, you are our healer. You are the source of life and the only one that can mend the brokenness of our sinfulness and our wretchedness. We thank you, Lord, that in your great mercy you do come to us and meet us and heal us by your powerful word. We are raised from death to life, not just from our physical or emotional or financial needs, Lord, but that you heal us to the very depths of our needs and our souls with that which is most important, your Holy Spirit that gives us life everlasting. We pray, Lord, that then as we think about our own health and the health of others, that the spiritual need and the need of you in our lives would be at the forefront of all of our actions and our words and our thoughts. Lord, may all of our helping in the lives of others point others to you, the ultimate healer and great physician. Thank you, Lord, that you do constantly show us your mercy new every morning. And that you are with us today in whatever hurt that we are going through, that you truly care about everything that is broken in us and everything that we will go through. And you meet us and you'll give us the strength to endure and to use that as power in our lives. Lord Jesus, we come before you with a certain prayers today. From Ryan, we pray for his friend Lily, whose father was called home this week. We pray for comfort and strength through the resurrection. From Deb, we pray for Tim, who was entering hospice. We pray for God's peace and comfort. From Becky, we pray for all who are grieving great losses in their lives. From Lexi, we pray for safety of Andrew and uh, Andrew, who's in the Navy and going there for four months. Pray for his protection and safety. From Dean, we give praise and thanks to God, to his dear friends John and Tilla, who are celebrating their anniversary today. Lord, we pray that you would draw them closer to you and closer to one another. So, Cindy, we pray for all the businesses reopening in public areas, that this would go smoothly, Lord, that they would, people would social distance and be cautious as things begin to reopen and prevent the spread. From the end, Lord, we pray for Edna, who's recovering in Fargo after a hip replacement yesterday as a result of a fall in her apartment. We pray that you would give her renewal in body and soul. From Miriam, we pray that the Lord will guide President Trump, Governor Polis, and all those in authority. We pray for comfort and help for the folks in Michigan uh, who have been affected by the flooding. From Evelyn, we praise God that this week David celebrated one year since his heart transplant. and He's getting stronger every day. We thank you, Lord, for healing him. From Sandy, we pray for her husband and all in our faith community whose heart has needed repair and healing. Lord Jesus, we take a time to specifically name or mention before you on the silence of our hearts those areas of our life where we need your healing and strength. And now, Lord, we take a time to mention those in our lives who are in need of healing, that they would find what they need and that they would find strength in you. Lord Jesus, all these prayers and the unspoken ones we bring before you, knowing you are the great healer and the Father who loves us and has given everything so that we could belong to you forever. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord will look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Thank you again for joining us in worship today. We hope it was a blessing to you and that you've learned and uh, were comforted and encouraged by knowing that Jesus is your healer in all areas of your life. And that most importantly, he's given you spiritual life and healing that will last forever.